Hey my friends, welcome back to Falcons RC and we're going to keep working on the pink cup. Uh, this time we're gonna pretty much finish up the nose and then we're gonna do the tail wheel which is gonna come off of that toilet seat. So anyway, uh, pretty much what I'm gonna do right now is put some blocks of half inch foam in here at this point and almost some of it on the nose too and then we're gonna put this top piece over here of foam and then we're gonna shape it all nice and neat. Well, the pictures are pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> so I'm just gonna talk just to have some background noise pretty much. <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys. Well, as you can see, you know, you just do basic stuff, you know, shape most of it as you can with a knife and then, you know, rough sand it and then the regular sanding, you know. There is not much to this part, really. It's pretty simple stuff. The stuff that we all have done before probably. Well at least I have done a lot. <laughs> okay my friends, so I'm ready to pretty much start installing all the servos in place. Uh, the metal juice ran, yeah, and it delivered the rest of my stuff. So we're gonna start from the nose back. Uh, we're gonna have a great some hobby, 0.40 glow to electric motor here. There is no labeling on this one because I already this thing coming out, but I have another one over here with the labels on it. I don't even know if you can see that, but anyway, I tried to show it to you. The speed controller is a 50 amp speed controller. Same thing from Grayson Hobby. Uh, there is no BEC on it. Uh, the reason I'm used to do, using this motor is because it's what I got, you know. I have a Monster Power 60, but I think it's a little bit too big for this thing. And this motor is running on a 10 by 5 prop, which honestly, I want a 14 or a 16 inch prop on this plane. Uh, that motor, the way it's set up on four cells is really for a speed plane. And, and yeah, it's right now for a cup, you know. But I'm gonna have to leave it like it is for the moment at least, and we'll see what happens. If I like the way it flies, I'm just gonna keep it like that. If not, I'm probably gonna get a Tornagy motor. But anyway, to the elevator servo, which is gonna be this one right here. This is a Tornagy TGY225MG Metal Gear servo. That's a 30 gram servo, I believe, 28, 30 grams, I don't remember. Um, for the rest of the aircraft, I'm gonna be using this Hobby King Analog 929 Metal Gear servos too. Uh, these are 12 ounces, no, 12 grams, I think 12 or 13 grams, anyway. Uh, two, pretty well, there's gonna be four of them on the wing and one on the rudder. And, you know, they also came some links to make the, the adjustment of the servos easier. Over here we're gonna be having, a, this is my, pretty much my radio equipment. It's gonna be the FR Sky stuff. This is a six channel FR Sky receiver. I'm gonna be running uh, S boss system on it, testing it out for the first time too. I mean, I know it works. I tried it on the bench with some other servos, but this is the first time it's actually gonna fly. And of course, you know, like I mentioned, there is no BEC in there, so I'm gonna be running this one. Uh, I've been using these ones for about four years already. No, not four years, for about three years, and they work awesome. These are great BECs. They, I mean, I have this one, it's pretty much the same one. The reason why the string tubing is different is because I actually burn these wires on it. I plug it. I don't know what happened. I think I plugged something wrong or whatever and it burned these wires off. So I have to open it and replace those wires on it. But it still runs, works good. And as a pretty much the power plant is gonna be these batteries. These are four cell Tornagy Nanotech, four cells 2200. I'm gonna be running two of them. So I'm gonna be uh, pretty much a four cell 4400 milliamp by the time I'm pretty much ready to fly. So okay, my friends, I'm gonna start installing these things on place, and so enjoy the pictures. Okay, so first thing is the elevator servo, and here we have the wire that I left inside the plane before I glue it together. And the servos are just gonna be hard glue on place, nothing fancy, a regular push rod with a C band, and again, you know, simple stuff, nothing new. I'm not hiding the servos on the elevator, you know, just to keep it simple. As uh, you can see the alerons are being cut, the flap was split, and again, simple. I just tape them in place, In this way I have a nice surface on the top of the wing, you know. And I use a credit card to make my control horns. And as you can see, this thing actually looks like a chicken. Pay attention to it and you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> you see, it looks like a chicken. So anyway, I have to design it this way because my wings and my other ones are so thick uh, if I put a regular control horn on this thing it, the pivot point is way too far from my hinges and it was probably gonna give me a very weird 
you know, movement on the control surface. So doing designing this this way, now my servo is actually be, gonna have to be inside the wing. And of course, here we have Benjamin. The, he always comes in my room anyway to see what I'm doing. <laughs> so he came inside and he wanted to pick up the plane, so I let him pick it up. And this block is just a template so I can mark how big the hole is gonna be. And look here there, I'm actually cutting the hole on a bevel. I do this so whenever I glue this foam back in place, I can just sit it there without having to hold it. Okay, so the servo is installed in place now. And I actually have my radio on so we can test it out. Uh, yeah, the head glue is dry already. That one should be dry too. I'm gonna put some more blocks around it just to secure it in place, but let's just check it out now. That works. And that's actually working to the S-Boss. I'm telling the channel one pretty much to respond to channel one, the way I have it set up right now. So, so okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish all of them the exact same way. Okay, my friends, so I finished installing the servos in place and I'm up here now doing the testing, which pretty much you got elevator, rudder, and ones. Now this is the, the standard setup pretty much. If I want to do the double alerons on this switch right here, click it to the middle. And now I have my flaps. You can see now the flaps are moving in conjunction with the alerons together. Now if I go on flaps down, same switch, all the way up. It's probably hard for you to see it now, but the flaps went down. Let me focus on one side of the wing only maybe we'll get a better light on it so now we are on that particular side see that's fully flaps down and have other control still other control with the flaps down if i return the switch either all the way or just to the middle it don't matter which way, how far the flaps are going to go up and that's you know i put it on the middle only so my, i have full alerons if i go all the way down I go to normal fly again. Use the alerons on the outside and my other control surfaces, pretty much. But anyway, my friends, this is all we're gonna be doing to it till this point, I'm ready to fly. Uh, the next video is gonna be the mending fly. And this is not gonna be the end. The mending fly is not the end of the cup. I still have to put the wing braces on it. I, I'm gonna put the wing struts on it. And I'm gonna make the landing gear a little bit more stronger. And I'm going to paint it different too, guys. I'm gonna to have to paint it, I think I'm gonna go with white and blue. I wanted to leave it pink, but I can't get that color off of it. I just, I tried everything I could to get that red off the pink, and I can't. So I think I'm just gonna to have to paint it. So anyway, my friends, we have plenty of more videos coming up about the Piper Cup, you know, pretty much finishing it. And after it's, it's, it's done, I still have the event that I built it for, you know. <laughs> So, okay, my friends, there's a lot more to come about the Piper Cups. So, subscribe. See you next live.